All right, ladies and gentlemen, so before we get started on motorbike today, I have a couple updates. So today we're going to be working on installing a reed valve on the bike. But I just want to tell you, uh, basically, um, I have to wait until March 14th, 2018 to get this bike inspected to get the license plate on the bike because, you know, if I don't get a license plate on the bike, then there's chances that I could be, um, have my bike stolen or I could be, uh, arrested or shot or fined, uh, if I don't have the license plate because as you know, if anyone gets in any kind of automobile accident, there's like an accident that's gonna happen somehow, the license plate and the driver's license will make you safer, okay? So you basically, what you do is you pull out that driver's license and the license plate, when the crash is about to happen, no, don't, don't do this, okay? When the crash is about to happen and you say, you hold it up and you say, by the power of the government, save me from this crash. Instead of praying to God right and then somehow the magic license plate is gonna save you so anyways I've got to get that done and so in the meantime um, I want to do other things with the uh, the engine and one of the things I want to do is I want to paint it black and get rid of all the uh, buildup on the engine but I can't I, I don't want to do that until I install the reed valve because I might end up painting the reed valve whatever intake manifold is on the bike I'm going to be, you know, sanding it and painting it. So today we're going to try to install the 40 millimeter um, reed valve on the bike and see how that goes. All right, so we're trying to install this bike reed valve, and the first thing, engine, whatever you want to call it, and first thing is I removed the rear um, fender because I'm that could get in the way because this whole uh, carburetor is going to have to go down as far as I know because when the reed valve goes on, which comes with two gaskets and two screws, um, when it goes on, it sticks out lower than the uh, original intake. Now it doesn't look like I'm going to have to grind it off. I mean, I might have to because they all say you have to, but it looks like I actually might not have to. One of the important things when you get your reed valve is to check and make sure it's not broken because if there's any plastic pieces, number one, it's not going to work. Number two, it'll go in and get in your cylinder and your piston head. Now, right now, first thing you might notice is this actually looks cleaner. And that's just because I sprayed some um, WD-40 on it and uh, used a, br a wire brush in there. And so that's gotten rid of a lot of the uh, corrosion that was on there. I still need to get back in there further probably and do some more work and I need to find other brushes for that. We're going to use just a regular crescent wrench and a uh, box wrench, whatever you want to call it. And uh, we're just going to loosen this up. Okay, so this is not going to move because of the carburetor. So I'm definitely going to have to, well, if I try to loosen the carburetor and pull it out, it might make it worse. So let's see if there's anything we can do. Now, let's see if this will come loose. Oh yeah. So now let's get our carburetor off. All right, so now what we're gonna do, is we're gonna take this and all the pieces that go with the mounting stuff here and put it all in one little bag. There, maybe we won't use it. Okay, so we need this to come off and there's two ways to do it. Where's my vice grips? See if we can do it with the vice grips first. And if not, then we'll have to do it with uh, the double nut method, so. Okay, it's gonna go right on here. Sweet deal. All right, so.
I can get that even tighter if I want to. But right now the gasket, everything's looking good. So let's just find out if this carburetor can fit quite tight into extremes. Okay, so we seem to have a problem. This does not match up with that. We might have to use a hose to attach it, or uh, maybe this is too big and we gotta send it down or cut it off or something, I don't know. I'm gonna go get the other carburetor and see if it fits on here. Alright, so this plastic insert is what makes this carburetor fit on the stock uh, intake. This has to come off, I believe, for it to fit on the reed valve. I'm trying to get it off, but since this is cold, um, this doesn't want to come out because the metal is tight. I've tried expanding it in here, but it's still, I'm still having to work it out. So, again, we're having the same problem um, now that I got the plastic insert removed. It doesn't want to fit over the 40 millimeter uh, deal. So what I'm going to do is stick my screwdriver in there, expand it out, and slip it on. And it looks like it shouldn't leak if I get it all the way on. So we'll give it a try. All right. So I have one of these that's bad. The reed valve is broken. So since I have two of them, what I'm going to do is take my Dremel tool out and I'm going to try to ground this down on the outside evenly all the way around until it's flush with this groove here and see if then it will fit on the carburetor. I mean, I could sand it down, but it probably still would be too thick. So, all right. Alright, so what I'm doing right now is I got the carburetor on the floor in front of a hot furnace that's going right now and I got my intake manifold in the freezer and so the theory is is that the intake manifold is going to shrink and the uh, metal in the carburetor is going to expand. I also have a little bit of AMSOIL grease on the inside the intake place just to try to help it slide in there. It is rough since I've ground it down. I could grind it down more, but it didn't seem like I was making very much progress. So that's why I want to try this method really quick, see if I can get this to work. And if I can even get it started, um, then technically I should be able to take uh, both pieces, stick them in the vise once I've taken the reed valve part off, and squeeze it together and make it fit. And I also uh, used some of the Amazon put in there to help keep from having any air leaks where the, where the clamp comes apart like this so there's no air would, you know, get in there. We'll see. All right. All right, gotta hurry. Okay, while this is hot, pull this out, get the cold one. Don't know if this is gonna work, but we'll give it a shot. And we'll just press. Hey, it's starting. That's more progress than we made before. See if we can pry this apart. Intake is still cold, and the verdict is it doesn't want to go down in there. Let's see if I can. All right, so I managed to get the reed valve thing installed, but there's kind of a problem here. So as you can see, I've got like the, the minimum um, number of space you can get down to. I didn't even put in the gasket yet. I'm just setting this on here to show you. I haven't even screwed it in. Okay, and it's like literally I've got that much room like one bolt uh, anyway I know it didn't tell you guys anything anyways if I set the engine down just to show you guys there that's as far as I can tilt the engine back to normal um, and uh, I'm still at that angle as far as I know this float's gonna flow over it's just not gonna work um, because it needs to be like this Okay, but that's not happening now. What did I have to do to get this far? Well, let me show you. Okay, so get this reed valve off of this carburetor. There we go. Okay, so here's what it looked like when we started. This is the one with the broken valve in it. Okay, so this is what it what it looked like when we when we started. Here's what it looks like now. Let's see if I can get them exactly next to each other, so you guys can see. So. Uh, basically everything 
from uh, this little notch forward is cut off. I had sanded it all down, I ground it all down so it fit, but the problem was just so long that there was no way I could put the carburetor between here and the frame. So I had to cut it down to this, and I still had to grind it down because it was still too large diameter to fit. And the thing is stretched, okay? So in here, that is stretched. You see that big gap? It's not supposed to be that big. And I put some grease in there to try to, you know, make sure it wasn't going to get in holes. So this isn't going to work. It's not going to work. So what I have to do to make it work is um, I have to put a 90 degree bend on here and put the air filter out here as long as the bend is uh, not as long as the air filter. And then, um, you know, if it like comes like this, then that'll, that'll work. But anyway, um, or I guess I could say like this across there, then it should work. But um, anyways, that's what I gotta do. The only other option is to get uh, one of those that has 45 degree angle and put it on here. Or um, technically I could take the other one or this one and put threads on it and then put a 45 degree uh, angle thing going out that way um, now NT carburetor going on here how would that be possible well let's talk about it since since things aren't the right size um, basically the outside outer diameter of the fitting for the carburetor is the same as this and look it's hitting the clutch it's hitting the, the clutch cable when I put it here but if hypothetically we put it here um, I could get a hose and two hose clamps and I could put those together like that and technically the empty carb would work but then again look at how much tilt had the tilt on that it's just now I'm gonna do some research because maybe maybe you can tilt these carbs like this and get them to work I'll, I'll look it up um, but as far as I know they got to be flat I'll ask some people in the Facebook groups but this is how you mount the thing. You put the little uh, thing in there, you put the two screws in, you put it on, and I think I've already shown how to do that in a previous uh, clip. But there you go. So anyways, thanks for watching the video. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Would you just please, please click the link in the description of the video. Consider getting to our Patreon. Check out CourtneyCourse.com, but make sure you check out how to win in court. All right.